Nissan is an electric vehicle trailblazer. The Leaf had its 10th birthday at the end of 2020 and celebrated by passing half a million lifetime sales. It's paved the way for countless other car brands to mass produce EVs of their own, which means that Nissan really can't afford to stand still. So now it's time for a new chapter. Because this is the area. When the Leafs Big Brother goes on sale towards the end of this year, it's going to open up the crossover market for Nissan, a market which, with the Qashqai, it arguably started in the first place. Now, we're not allowed to drive it just yet, so in this video, we're going to take a look at detail at the Aria to figure out if Nissan has another sales hit on its hands. But before we take a deep dive into the Aria's details, if you'd like to see more videos like this, plus news, reviews, and trap battles, make sure you've subscribed to the Auto Express channel. From the off, it looks like the Aria will have a much tougher job on its hands than Nissan's former hits. Not because of the way it looks, mind you. From the 3D effect grille that lights up around the edges, to the razor sharp crease running along the car's flanks, and the full width light bar at the back, it's really got a cutting edge concept car look about it. No, it's because unlike market segment pioneers like the Duke and the Qashqai and the Leaf, Nissan is a bit late to the electric crossover party. The Aria will be wading into a market that's quickly filling up with loads of fascinating competition. The Volkswagen ID4, the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y are all in a similar ballpark to the Aria. The Aria has been positioned as Nissan's halo model. It measures 4.6 metres long, 1.6 metres tall and 1.8 metres wide, which makes it 45mm shorter than the X-Trail, 50mm lower and just a smidge wider. So what's my favourite angle of the Aria? Well, I really like the front actually. It's so bluff and square and looks really Japanese still. It reminds me of a massive K car. And if you're wondering about this copper and black colour combination, and it's called Akatsuki, and it's supposed to take inspiration from the warm shades of a sunrise. Well, not in the UK obviously, otherwise it'd be grey. There's going to be six other two-tone shades to pick from too, while all the wheel sizes measure either 19 or 20 inches depending on the model you go for. Whatever you think of the design, you're going to become familiar with it, because the Aria is setting the design direction for the next generation of Nissan's cars. The Aria rides on the CMF EV platform, a new architecture developed by the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance designed for electric cars from the outset. The new platform has really allowed Nissan to capitalise on electric car benefits. There's no need to package a bulky engine up front, so the bonnet can be shorter. Some EVs get a front boot, but Nissan has instead stuck the air conditioning unit up there, rather than behind the dashboard where most cars keep it. Combine all of this with a wheelbase that's 70 millimeters longer than the X-Trail and there's plenty of potential for a roomy cabin. And Nissan has really made the most of it. And the end result of that is that the interior designers have been able to take advantage of an almost completely flat floor space. It just makes the whole place feel so light and airy. And what a cabin it is. It just looks really cool and modern and futuristic. And Nissan says it's like the cafe lounge on a Starship and Maybe I'm not well travelled, but I've never been on the cafe lounge on a Starship, so I'll take their word for it. What I do know is I really like this two-spoke steering wheel, that looks really cool. And I love these capacitive dials for the air conditioning, which light up as you turn the car on. It reminds me of a really posh hi-fi. And then we've got these two screens here. The 12.3 inch display sits side by side for an almost continuous digital bank in front of you. The central infotainment system is a massive leap beyond anything Nissan currently offers, with bold tile-like shortcuts for all of the main touchscreen functions. Battery and range info plus navigation instructions can all be prioritised with smartphone-like pinches and swipes. This was a pre-production model, but everything felt really well put together inside. The backlit textured plastics are a neat touch, and the physical switchgear feels sturdy. Well, what little of it there is anyway. Nissan calls the Aria a coupe crossover, which is usually marketing speak for there's no headroom in the back, but you know what? It's not bad in here at all. You can really feel the benefits of the long wheelbase too, because there's absolutely loads of knee room. And back seat passengers aren't missing out on any quality, because you still got all the textured plastics and leather trim that you get up front. Further back though, boot space is only between 408 and 466 litres, depending on which model you go for. At least the opening is big and the load space is flat. The Aria will be offered with five powertrain options. 
The first two have a single electric motor driving the front wheels, and there's a choice of either 214 brake horsepower or 239 brake horsepower. However, those two also get different battery sizes too. So the lower powered one has a 63 kilowatt hour unit, and the larger one gets 87 kilowatt hours. However, if you want a bit more pulling power and a bit more traction, then Nissan will stick another motor in the back axle too. The range there starts from a 63 kilowatt hour battery with 274 brake horsepower, and then the 87 kilowatt hour unit is available with two models, one with 302 brake horsepower and the other with 389 brake horsepower. That's 50 horsepower more than the 370Z Nismo in a family crossover, and it'll go quicker with barely any effort. The performance model, as it's known, covers the 0-62 time in just 5.1 seconds, while a chunky 600 Nm of torque means that it'll feel fast at any speed. At the entry point to the range, the two front-wheel drive models take about the same 7.5 or so seconds to reach 62. That's because even though there's a 25 brake horsepower difference between the two models, that bigger battery weighs the more powerful version down. The flip side of that, of course, is range. Nissan reckons that the 87 kilowatt hour front driven area should cover 310 miles between charges, compared to 223 for the 63 kilowatt hour base model. The shortest range comes from the four wheel drive 63 kilowatt hour model, which should do 211 miles. The performance model does 248 miles, and the middle four wheel drive version does 285 miles. Now let's talk about charging. The Aria can charge at speeds up to 130 kilowatts, which is conveniently 5 kilowatts quicker than the Volkswagen ID4. And unlike Nissans of the past, which have used Chadamo connections, the Aria gets CCS. Just like the Leaf, the Aria will get an e-pedal mode. Using strong regenerative braking, it means that you can pretty much drive the Aria with just one pedal in most situations. The regen comes in handy at other points too. The instant response of those motors allows drive to be adjusted continuously, so when you hit bumps in the road, the Aria will be able to adjust its motors on the fly to iron out any sudden pitch and dive movements. Around the corners, those motors combine with little tweaks of each individual brake to provide a torque vectoring system. So even though the Aria weighs between 1.8 and 2.3 tonnes, it shouldn't be left floundering through the bends. The Leaf and the Qashqai already make use of semi-autonomous tech, and the Aria will too. Nissan's Pro Pilot system can drive itself in short bursts on motorways and A-roads, and it uses navigation data to adjust its speed when limits change. So then, money. How much is the Aria going to cost? Well, Nissan hasn't given away much just yet, but you can expect the bulk of the range to cost between 40 and 50,000 pounds. But what do you think? Will you be choosing the Aria over its rivals, or is there a standout EV in this class? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and thanks for watching.